Hello and welcome to let's think aloud.com. Well, today I'm going to be talking to Lilet Dubey. Yes, we've all loved her on the silver screen. We've all loved her on stage and she's going to be in Singapore really soon on August 30th for her play Dance Like a Man brought to you by Teamwork Productions. So I had the honor of talking to her, chatting up with her and we did this really lovely long interview and it's really long but it's so interesting to hear her talk. She can go on and on and she can really give you some interesting tidbits on her life. Her life is a director, her life is an actress. It's just absolutely fascinating hearing her. So um let's just talk to Lilette Dubey. Hello Lilette and welcome to Let's Think Aloud. Hi, how are you doing? I'm doing fine, thank you. How are you doing? Well, running between getting ready to come to Singapore and straight after that we're going for shows to South Africa. So, yeah, it's nice and busy. You know, and then very soon after that I'm shooting for this fabulous fabulous um uh, very close to your part of the world, uh Channel 4 and PBS are doing this wonderful 10 part mini series called Indian Summers. I'm happily promoting it because I think it's absolutely brilliant. So, I'm going to be shooting in Penang, I'm shooting in South Africa, come back. Okay. Delhi is it? Third schedule. Oh wow! So very close to Singapore. I mean, I'm sort of uh, an hour away from Singapore. <laughs> yeah, really close. You never know. We might just drop by to get yeah, fresh. Yeah, do that. Come and cover it. <laughs> of course, we would. <laughs> you know, one of my very early memories of you has been when I was in college and I had bumped college and I had gone and watched Monsoon Wedding. And at that time, <laughs> we have these really crazy ideas about how we want to get married. Although we're nowhere close to getting married. But <laughs> a good idea. Yeah. But I remember I had come home from um, the film and I said, "Oh, you know, I didn't I didn't go to college today. I actually watched Monsoon Wedding." So my mom's like, "Oh, okay." So she was already a little upset with me for not attending the lectures. And the next thing I say is, "Okay, just a thought. Uh, the next time we talk about marriage or the day when you decide to get me married, I want to have a wedding in the rains." And my <laughs> and my parents just had this weirdest look on their faces, and they just looked at each other, and then they said, "We'll talk about that when the time comes." So, <laughs> and the time has not come. <laughs> um, no, well, it did, but unfortunately, I did not have a monsoon wedding. <laughs> okay, okay. As much as I would have loved to, but of course, so when I think about Lilat Dubey, ever since that time, you know, whether it's been on TV or on stage, you've always done these very uh, distinctive, unforgettable roles in. Every film or play that you've done. So, but that was tough, Himani, because you know, I mean, on stage, of course, stage. I, I sort of took the stage like fish to water when I was in college, and and uh, it's been my uh, enduring passion. I think more than anything else uh, mm-hmm. for you know, almost almost like almost forty years now since okay. I joined. So it's a uh, it's a uh, heart and soul of my creative life. But um, so when people say that about films, it's it's very hard because I joined films when I came to Bombay mm-hmm. and it was um, forty, and it just happened. I called myself an accidental film actress because I came here and Mr. Benigal asked me to do Zubeda, right? And I said, why not? Let's try this also. And, you know, let's have a bash at films. Right. And film career has always been just. Uh, I mean, if uh, when I look, I think I'm very lucky. But I think it was my theatre work, really, that that let me enjoy films so much because all my creative satisfaction, even till date, comes from theatre. True. And the films are something I thoroughly enjoy because I get a lot of uh, exposure. I travel a lot. I get to work with some phenomenal actors. Right. Who I mean, I've worked with. You know, I'm working uh, with Roshan, of course, for Sage this month. Um, right. I worked. Um, I did the sequel to the Best Exotic Marigold, which is coming out in February. Right. It had you know the most outstanding English cast, and it had the same cast again, including David Strathairn, Richard Gill, etc., etc., who was paired off with me romantically in the film. And so, I, you know, film allows me to work with a lot of people I would never have worked with because uh, you don't um, they don't work in theatre necessarily, and certainly not in Indian theatre. Right. So that that is fantastic, and I. And I have a lot of fun um, doing a very different medium, you know, so, so sort of honing my skills to play in an absolutely different medium. Right. Uh, but 
still I have still to find part in film which makes me even half as excited as the work I do in theatre. But I'm happy to hear that people feel that way because when I came into film, they realised, look, I come from the theatre, Dakini, so mercifully, I'm very free from all these constraints of uh, you know this baggage about being a huge superstar one right. scene. This kind of role, and I can't. So I can do a my brother Nikhil, but I can also do a brother, and I can also do a Babban, but I can also do a I do a houseful, and I can also do a Bo Barracks. I can do a monsoon. I can do an exotic. You know, I can I want because I don't come with any labels. True. I came just as a theatre actor into film, and I'm so happy to see the way the tide has changed. How many wonderful actors! Uh, from theatre, who are not, you know, necessarily weren't seen as star material ones, you know, right. like in a, in, even in a, a, a barn, are s- just flourishing now because the, the talent is what is the main main thing. It is not the trappings. Yeah, there is still the commercial theatre which which rides on the stars, but there's a lot of very interesting, independent, different kind of film uh, work that's happening. And I think Indian film is maturing, really maturing, and coming out with stuff that's that's so much more realistic, so much more closer to reality. I'm very excited to see it now. I mean, you know, I, I did Lunchbox just for the sake of being part of the film. My role was so minuscule. I mean, right. mm-hmm. but uh, because I love the script, I thought the script was so interesting. And uh, it, it, sometimes I just want to be part of something like that. It doesn't have to be. So what I'm saying is the age and my background allow me to. That's why you, I think, kind of remember me because I've not submerged myself into just becoming the auntie. No, absolutely the, not. <laughs> I try to keep it because they used to call me. They used to say, "Acha, you know, so and so actor or star, you know me." So I said, "Okay, but what do I do? What do I do? I'm me. So I said, "Ma, Ma, but Ma is also Ma. You know, your mom is also Ma. It's not the same thing." So uh, I said I don't want to just become. Even though I know, you know, film keeps pushing you into roles where you look, where you can't fight your look. I found right. it very difficult. Theatre, I can play this Ratna in Dance Like a Man, mm-hmm. the aging Indian dancer, pure tan ram. Right. Very different from me, uh, and I can play. Uh, You know, a woman who I'm playing in my new latest play with uh, Mesh Dattani, who's now who's 80 years old, who's a sort of Zulu Sagal sort of character, very feisty, oh, wow. okay. very cool. Uh, to to someone who is, um, you know, is playing this character, which Meryl Streep played in August of Sage County, is another play of mine that's running. This completely frenzied, crazy, drugged out woman. Uh, you know, I mean, so it's it is so much range, and it has nothing to do with what I look like. The roles that you do, you haven't made a mom look sexier, um, a, a wife of a middle-aged man look hotter, but you have changed that for the screen for us. We love looking at a mom on in monsoon wedding, or we love looking what you did in Kalhuna Ho, because that's what <laughs> that's what. Is so distinctive and fun about you that when we know it's Lilit Dubey, we know okay, this is going to be something different. It's not going to be the run of the mill mom, you know, that you're going to see on screen or so, any other character, you know, whether it was Rosie in Zubeda, whether it is what I play in this exotic married gold. So I did a film called Cabby, you know, Doctor Cabby, which Salman Khan is. Okay. First international film. It's a Canadian film. Okay. And again, she's this. Again, she's a mom. But she's this woman from Delhi, from Chandni Chowk, who you know, like gets to Toronto, and then what happens? <laughs> <laughs> you know, Toronto is never the same again. <laughs> so, uh, you know, so I mean, that's that's what I try very hard because the space is so narrow in which we have to work in film. I mean, for me, for me, I'm I'm, I'm chafing at the bit because this is very constraining for me to have such, such limited stuff. That I have to really find a way to make it like. Interesting and 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 that even though it may be six scenes, seven scenes in a film, you will remember this character, and she's not just going to be one of those yet again yeah. mummy sister. Yeah, yeah. She's going to be something. And you know, Kalona for me was challenging because it, it could so easily have gone vulgar or 
so true. Know. Yes. The fun part about this interview is that I haven't even asked you my first question, and you have given me so much stuff that I'm so happy. Well, all the journals I talk to say, they say that it's so wonderful to talk to you because you answer half the things. I, I know. Say. <laughs> really, like you've almost given me like more than half of my interview. Probably even some questions I hadn't penned. <laughs> <laughs> but firstly I, I want to ask you because you are one of the seasoned actors uh, of the industry you're closely connected to theater but i want to know how did you land up on stage how did led to be begin theater yeah and it's cool uh, you know like everybody else there was dramatic captain blah 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 okay. and i thought i really uh, thought that's how it started you know we won all these dramatic competitions in school and you know best actor and blah 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 and then i joined lady shri ram college in delhi and then i was very very then there was no stopping me i was very active though i come from a highly professional family my mother the kind of fast away last station she was the guy in college is my father who also i lost a few years ago with a uh, engineer a physicist the passion and you know, judges lawyers and the doctors all the rest of the family are you know, for us so i was told okay if you must pursue a slightly redundant course like literature and uh-huh. you must it then at least uh, you know at least if you want to do something like me theater ultimately or or the media at least educate yourself properly so i had to do two masters one in english literature and one in mass communications and uh, i continued doing theater throughout but talking about when it started it was a very strange thing i bumped into someone in in a in a plane recently somebody who must have known me when i was 9 10 must have been a neighbor and barely remembered her okay. and she drew my my memory to the fact that when i was about 8 or 9 uh, of course i used to do this i used to have we had a big terrace on our house you know and <laughs> okay and i used to put up these shows where i had this you know as to make all my little sisters and whatever whatever all my little flunkies all this chatter and uh, and i used to have these shows in the evening very mm-hmm. often okay. uh, and i believe i used to charge also 25 p or something <laughs> 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 even in those days okay. and i used to do these one woman things dance wow. and, sing and all that and i used to call the neighborhood kids okay come <laughs> 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 and wow. see the shows so she reminded me of that because i was one of your audience and then i see you on screen now i can remember what you used to do then <laughs> so obviously it went even further back which i which i sort of didn't remember very clearly then right. college was a lot of theater both for lady shri ram as well as in stevens with her day and i met barry barry john oh wow okay i met him right and he it, there was already a fire burning he like fanned it so he and uh, my husband as well as some very well known people like siddharth basu you know who's a producer of konvani the property and several other people in the media now there were about seven of us uh, with barry who set up a group called the theater action group and it started in 1704 and we did a lot of lot of theater i mean like junoon thaus work we just and we play after play and later entrants were people like Manoj Vajpayee and Shalok and all that were all part of the same theatre company okay. and we all moved off later into films as well so for about 15 years I was a mini diva I did all the lead roles from everything that Barry did so that you know so I when, when people say where did you go to drama school I said I went to The Barry John School. Right? <laughs> oh, he had a drama school. <laughs> he did Shakespeare. We did Brecht. We did the classics. We did. I mean, you name it, and we did it. Absurd theatre. We did. We did. Uh, you know, comedies. We did musicals. We did everything. Fifteen years, I worked with him, and you know, then I finished. I got married. I had kids, and then only in '91, I had this great urge to start my own theatre company. Okay. because that felt very strongly about platforming indian work mm-hmm. you know, i mean i think it was phenomenal the work that we did with barry and right. it was a huge learning and it was like you know coming to know about world uh, literature uh, okay drama but i felt like now i want to set up a company where i want to showcase indian writing indian uh, stories and the indian voice in english right. here okay so that was my uh, what impelled me to start my own company in 91 which is going to finish 25 years at the beginning of 16 wow 
<laughs> and we're planning a lot of very exciting things, a very, very big musical on a wonderful character called Kohal Jan. Uh, oh. Early 1800s. Yeah, it's a big musical, big fat musical. She was one of the best Tumbi singers, first woman to cut an album ever. Very interesting. It was all Banaras, Lucknow, Kolkata, you know, in the in the early 1900s. Very romantic period. But this dance like a man comes a very important part of this journey, and that's yeah. why it's it's been a very special play. And I think it's always going to be one of very very special plays of our company because we started in 91, and uh, we began. We were a little scared of going, you know, full hog uh, with with completely Indian plays because nobody did Indian. Plays. Everybody was doing the Neil Simons and the, the, the popular kind of stuff. You know, right. You know, it's a Mumbai Raj ka itna bada hang up hai. So, fish play rights and western play rights and right. you know, the, the, the serious and whatever, whatever. Mm-hmm. So, nothing wrong with it. Great play rights, great stuff. But like I say, the whole world is there to do their plays. True. So, who is going to do our plays if we don't do them? Mm-hmm. Who is going to tell our stories if we don't tell them? Right. So. Somebody sitting in, uh, uh, you know, Africa or America, uh, will tell their own stories. We have to wake up and and tell our own stories, and then they have to be so universally accessible and relatable to that. Then the people can relate to it, and so it has to be very Indian, very mm-hmm. soak. That's why dance is a, a shining example of that. That it can be very Indian in spirit, in ethos, in culture, and music, and look. Visually, everything had fabulous reviews all over the world. But when we right. first went to America, in the, the New York Times, which doesn't review anything that doesn't play for like a few months at least, so we were very, very lucky that they reviewed us and gave us a half-page rave review. And all of them talked about how amazing it was that it was, in a sense, so exotic and different, and yet mm-hmm. it was familiar. The guy wrote a line I remember as familiar as your kitchen sink. That familiar. So right. that's quite a feat. To to have something that is rooted so much in an Indian um, context, okay. and at the same time can transcend all that and speak to you in a language and have relationships and, uh, and a story that you totally totally understand and totally get and totally can uh, involve yourself in and, and relate to and identify with. I think that's a very unusual thing about um, many of the plays that I've done because. See, one of the one of it was to showcase Indian work, and the second was the reason why we're coming to Singapore was that I said, now it's great. We do a play. In those days, we used to do a show for like ten shows, and we did fifteen. It was like fantastic. Right. <laughs> and never took it out of the city to show perform. And I said, we will take it across India. We will start taking shows abroad. There is no. We have to see how do we stand up. It's when you get out there in the global market. Mm-hmm. And you pitch your stuff there in whichever field, be it creative, be it cricket, be it business. That's when you know your worth, you know, because you are now pitched against people who are doing very good stuff internationally. There's no point feeling like you're a little frog in a pond, thinking, oh, people come and say, oh, you do great stuff and all that, and then you go right. out there and people say, what? Uh, okay, um, it's not bad. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you get a shock because you, you've been living in this nice bubble, thinking, you know. Uh, that's why I, I I'm now really looking to do more international work in films. I want to tra- travel a lot more with plays. We've traveled. I mean, I think we are the most traveled company. I can say this outright uh, in India because we have like traveled from small cities in New Zealand all the way across to the west coast of America. I've done, done China. We haven't done the Soviet Union. <coughs> we haven't done Latin America yet, but we've done Africa. We've done a uh, lot of Southeast Asia. We haven't done Japan. I mean, there of course many countries we haven't done, but I right. can string uh, that we are just uh, you know Indian um, Mumbai-based company which does Indian work. Mm-hmm. And you're not taking, you're not doing Shakespeare with a twist, and you're not doing some other sort of obviously. If you do Western work and you do it with an Indian twist, Indian interpretation, then those countries are very excited about bringing right, our stuff. Right, exactly. But here, this is no such thing. There is no such thing. This is born, bred, pure Indian material. But we have plenty of cities in which we have. Come, I don't know what sort of a profile we're going to have in Singapore. We've come many times to Singapore before. Right. But I would like 
Indians to come. Of course, but I would like a lot of non-Indians to come and right. be pleasantly, hopefully, surprised at the kind of theatre that is coming out of another country, because they see the staple diet I know in Singapore that comes from England or at best from the States, or maybe right. sometimes from Africa or something. But they don't get to see much stuff which is which is homegrown like this. I, I look forward to coming to cities like Singapore and other places abroad. Not just for NRI audiences, who I know are going to patronize it anyway, but for really, this is what I want to say on your thing that I really want people who are not Indian to come because we have been delighted by their reaction. Mm -hmm. And how how does it work with them? Because you know that's where our common humanity comes to shine. The lie is how connected we are all. At the end of the day, you know how how the common denominator of of all of us is the same in many, many ways. <clears throat> a mother, daughter, husband, wife. You know, it's so amazing when we laugh at the same places as people laugh in India. Because mm -hmm. wonderful. You see, oh my God, how did they get that joke? It's lovely <laughs> to hear you talk about theatre and the evolution of Indian theatre the way you would want to see it. Well, I hope it inspires because I tell you, Dance Like a Man, I know. What is it about? What is Dance Like a Man about? Well, on a very simple level, mm -hmm. I would say surface level, it's a okay. story which is about uh, a husband and wife, checkered past, mm -hmm. yes, together we are two over the hill Bharatnatyam dancers, Moon mm -hmm. and their Krishna. Okay. And they're two very strong, very interesting characters. Okay. And they have a young daughter who's frankly better than both of them. She's a brilliant dancer and she's debuting uh, okay. as a dancer. Uh, and she has a boyfriend who yes. is a Norwegian sort of Marwadi boy uh -huh. who knows nothing about art and you know anything so he's quite a clownish character cute okay. Okay. now the interesting part is that one part of the play when it opens is in the present but then the play moves between the present and the past which is in the 50s early 50s very close to post independence wow. and okay and the same actors play the past my my daughter in the present plays me when I was in my 20s in the past. Seamless, it's seamless. It happens like in the flash blink of a second. You know, I've done a very, very, very subtle transition. You get it immediately. Frankly, I was not doing this role. I mean, now people go on and on about me in this part, but I could find the actor for four weeks, three weeks before the play and I said, hang it, I'll just do it myself. <laughs> so, okay. The mm -hmm. interesting part is the relationship. You know, I get hooked on a play because I identify with the with the relationship and the, and the story has to be very strong and has something to say. So right. the relationships are what grab people, the husband wife relationship. In the past, in the present. Okay. The mother daughter relationship, which is such a complex, such a beautiful relationship. But the mother at one level is also an artist and a woman who's once beautiful father son relationships, mother daughter relationships. Right. Uh, the, you know, daughter father relationship. So it examines a lot of all that. The beauty of dance is there's a lot of humor. It's very dramatic. It's very powerful in bits. It's very, um, it's very funny in bits. It's very moving and emotional in bits. It's got a lovely mix of things, you know. In I think in almost equal proportions. This back and forth keeps you on your toes because you have to know what's going on. You know, when you're in the past, when you're in the present. Right. And through these relationships which you identify with and you get involved in the play, it also examines a lot of issues which is what makes it a really good play. A really good play works on many levels. It's not just a story, you know, simple mm -hmm. story. it's not simplistic. Mm -hmm. I remember, I always felt it had many layers but just to wind up, I remember when the New York Times review came out. You know, when I read it, I realized why the New York Times review is like a Bible. That <laughs> that book they are made on those reviews because they're so well researched and well informed. There's right. no winging it. The man mm -hmm. who's quoting from the Natya Shastra, no guy who has ever written a uh, you know review of Dance Like a Man in India has ever quoted the Natya Shastra. How this play, I mean, his concluding lines were so beautiful. I mean, I treasure one, that's one of my only treasured reviews. Okay. Because he said, that, you know, the Natya Shastra, you know, is part of the Vedas and it is about the creative arts mm -hmm. and what creative arts are about. In the end, he wrote that, you know, the, the lofty ideals of the Natya Shastra may be almost beyond human reach. But mm -hmm. this play is pretty damn close. Oh, so it was such a wonderful compliment. And so I told my case jocularly when I came back, I said, sweetheart, I don't think even when you wrote this play, any of this, <laughs> look at what 
what he has mined out of this place. You know, <laughs> all he's got out of it. He never thought about it at that time. Oh, he laughed. Of course, I didn't know that. Oh, where did you think of all this? For me, Himani, it was like a. It was what gave me, you know, it's reinforced what I felt that. Just because it's Indian, because when we were going, like when we come to Singapore, we are not going to take away the accents. We are right. not going to take away Indian words. We are not going to give you a glossary. Right. No. This is a play. Hello. If we yeah. can see plays about blacks, we can see plays, you know, about the Midwest where people talk like they've got marbles in their mouth. If right. we can see plays, you know, people who are speaking Chinese accents, then hello, you have to see our play the way it is. We are not going to make it easy for you. People say, how will people understand things like Panwala and Adagoons and all that? I said, well, if they don't, they'll get the gist of it. Right. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not going to change this play for them. We yeah. have Guju accents, South Indian Damram accents. We have regular Indian, you know, strong Indian, hitting consonant Indian accents. And that's what it is. It's too bad. It's, you know, you have to enter that world. What went yeah. into the casting of uh, Dance Like a Man? You have Suchitra Pillai, you have Joyce and Gupta, you have yourself, so you have some fabulous performers. You know, that's the other thing you are asking me, what is, what has made this play, you know, like, what it is. What it is. I think yeah. aside from the script and aside from that wonderful mixture of, of elements that I told you in, 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 in the, just the right proportions uh -huh. to keep you engaged, meaning humor, drama, emotion, you know. It's right. very, very, just lovely, lovely uh, mix. The, the sort of the, the backbone of this play is, is the performances. They are really, really, and I'm not saying this, I'm, I mean, I'm supposed to be a very tough director. All my actors will tell you that. That oh. I've yanked them and pulled them to like get every little bit that's inside them out. So oh my God. I think some of these actors, they tell me themselves, have done some of their best work with me. Because I don't let them be. I don't let them get lazy. Right. I know can stretch themselves more and I don't allow them to get smug and comfortable. Mm -hmm. I think performances when you come and see the play, I think you will agree, are just terrific. And the wow. casting, well, originally I opened the play in Delhi and we did about 25-30 shows with mm -hmm. another cast. Joy and I are the only two, you know, sort of oldies who are still there for the original. There was Siddharth Basu, who played okay. the play and there was a girl called, uh, who was also a Odissi dancer called Shivani Wazir. Okay. Who did the, you know, but once I moved to Bombay in 96, mm -hmm. I changed the cast. Okay. And I cast, uh, I, I auditioned a lot of people. Uh, Vijay, of course, uh, I knew was a very, very good actor. Right. So, uh, he's brilliant. And uh, I, can't, I auditioned a lot of girls for Suchi's first role, but uh, finally I went with Suchi and she's also fantastic in it. I think it's one of her best work, best things she's ever done. Wow. I, and they're all, all of them very good and you just see how seamlessly they keep slipping, you know. It's lovely. Of course, now they are, they are like, they're 504, 505 shows strong. True. But you have done so many plays in the past. You've done Boy Beans and Toast, you've done Drama. That's my latest play, yeah. That's yeah. Great. Girish Karna's latest play. Exactly. Jandhi. In fact, mm -hmm. you started off with Wedding Album with uh, Girish Karnad, right? The yes, wedding yes. album, yeah. But now, so how tough is it to act and direct at the same time for Dance Like a Man, where it's such a strong play with a strong content and story, with so much of back and forth, and yet you're acting and directing. How tough or easy was it? Well, at that point, it is tough. And it was one of the first plays in which, uh, not one of the first, but like, let's say the third, fourth play, which I was directing and acting in. Okay. That's why I chose this I was okay to do this part because picture she's she leaves a huge impression. I know because people tell me about her character. Right. Uh, she has played her reasonably well, so people remember her very strongly. So okay. I could manage it because I was not there a lot, and I you know just did it just very intuitively myself. I just I you know I knew a lot of dancers, classical dancers, and it was so amusing because mm -hmm. it wasn't really based on anybody. It was the mixture of all of them in Delhi. They're full of classical. Right. You know, acting is only about observation. That's the two key words. So observe people and nature and act and the human beings. And you do it with truth that it is so natural that it doesn't seem like acting. I uh, find it much easier because I'm not just director, I'm also producer. So right. it gaps when I'm a director. And I've become much more selective, Imani. I mean, in the last few years, 10 years, I have chosen to do maybe five plays, you know, which I, where the parts were so delicious. 
that I could resist. I did Adil Dude, which I, you know, I wanted to do a Hindi play for a long time, and it's just one of the most brilliant Hindi plays. Okay. Then I wanted Akshay and me play the main lead. Oh, and uh, Ira Dubey, uh, my daughter, she's fabulous in it as well, and a couple of very good young actors. Then there was a play called August of Sage County, you know, the film, which is mm-hmm. a absolute kick-ass, kick-ass script. So I wanted to do Violet, the one that Meryl Streep did. Okay. So that had Sandhya Madhul, Kitu Bidwan, Suchitra, my daughter, uh, me, uh, Mita Vishesh, very, very strong female cast. So when I get very seduced by the part, you know, I feel like mm-hmm. it suits me. It will stretch me a little, you know. It will make me work as an actor. Then I do it. That's that's happening once in two years or something like that. So I'm not doing like every show that comes along. Like my agent told me, you know, I'm writing that part with you in mind, so you just have to do it. And in that, I know I have to work on my old blues. I used to learn classical music. I have to go back to music a little. So right. it will push me. You know, it has to push me a little. So if it pushes me and it's exciting. Because where do I get my manna, my creative manna? It's not coming much from films. Right. So I, I, I mean, not that kind. I mean, I love monsoon. Don't get me wrong. I enjoy films thoroughly. Mm-hmm. And yes, I put my heart and soul into whatever I do. Right. You know, oh, whether it's a best exotic, or a, <laughs> it doesn't matter. So once I'm committed, I will do it with truth and to the best of my ability. Because that's what you see on screen. You see my enjoyment in my work. Totally. Whatever it is, foolish, crazy, ridiculous, you know. Yes. Because to me, film is not my vision. It's not my sensibility. I mean, right. when I do a house or a monsoon wedding or a whatever, my brother Nikhil, or, you know, anything, anything, any kind of film, a lunchbox, mm-hmm. it's not my film. Film is a director's medium. I'm just a cog in the wheel. I sure. go there. I do my part. I do it to the best of my ability. I try to keep the tone and the sensibility of that film in mind when I'm doing that part, because it's not a gadar. Lunchbox is a very quiet film. A gadar is a very different kind of film. Yeah. So be in sync with the, without being untruthful to yourself as an actor. I mean, I I remember telling the gadar director, listen, I I mean, much of the love of Mishri and you know, God bless him and all that, uh, and and Sunny do it. I can't do that thundering kind of acting. Yeah. <laughs> Can't. I feel so exotic. Yeah. I did it my way, you know. Right. And if that's okay for you, because he he ran after me like hell to do that role, you know. I kept telling him, but why? I mean, I'm I'm where did you suddenly discover that you want me to do this role? And no, nobody else but you saw me come play or something. Okay. And I said, but I can't do this kind of acting. I just can't. I mean, yeah. I tried <laughs> with this kind of thing, but. Hundred kind of thing. <laughs> I will die, you know. I will, I will, I will have to go and bury myself then. Yeah. <laughs> so against my my style, right, right. Uh, which is naturalistic. So he said, yes, yes, you will do it well. I'm sure and all that, and I don't need it like this and blah blah blah. So we have to be truthful, but still you have to understand the film yes. and the thing. So we try. I try to do it to the best of my ability in the manner that I think fits the thing. But there's no freedom like on stage. On stage, you are king. You yes. grab that stage and you rock it. To do something good, there is no shortcut. You have to work damn hard. Even mm-hmm. if you're very talented, without theatre is about hard work. Right. People laugh at me. They see me, uh, you know, in films, and then they see me on stage, and they suddenly see me. They see me just before the show. You know, I could be, I could be sweeping the floor. I could be dusting right. things. I could be doing anything. Right. I just want the set to look right, and I want everything to look good. And I could be fixing a light. I could be doing anything because theatre is totally democratic. Right. There's no just face for divas and you know all that nonsense. Okay, we have this very interesting quick pod segment. It's actually okay. a rapid fire, but because this is a podcast, we call it the quick pod, where you do not get time to think and you have to answer really quickly. Okay. okay. <laughs> so theatre or films? You'll never leave which one for which one. I never did care. Okay, monsoon wedding or Kalhona ho? Which one did you truly enjoy? Oh, definitely monsoon wedding. Okay, topics and plays that totally lighten up the fire in you to take it up. Anything that's strongly woman oriented and is making a statement about um, how women can, you know, improve their lives in whatever way. What actors today should know or learn? I think they should first know that. They need to become actors, not stars. The stardom right. is a is a bonus. 
mm-hmm. and it's something that is a byproduct. I think too many of them come with a star, uh, you know, stars in their eyes about becoming stars, mm-hmm. not about learning their craft. Because you find that what they don't realize is that if you're a superb actor, there's no way anyone can hide you behind a bushel. You know, you're going to be found. So right. it's the acting, and that's where you learn and where you will stay as an actor. Your longevity is going to last when that is, you know. Otherwise, that's why a lot of these actresses fade out. You know. Right. Uh, by the time they're late thirties, because it wasn't on the basis of their work, their talent. Right. A director or an actor you really want to work with in future, or again? A director I would give my arm to work with in theatre is Peter Brook. Okay. Uh, a film director I would uh, love to work with. Um, are, are, are there many in India also, as well as abroad also? So okay. Numerous to. to i think uh, but i'd love to work with mr benigal again sure one of one get again and many many of broad there's some very very exciting directors abroad you know what i haven't worked enough with mm-hmm. so what i have to do is work with more women directors would you like to work with um the way we since she comes up with very different films zoya akhtar yeah but i think with zoya also i'd like to work in a film that's even more like out of the box right so i think zoya's got it in her Right. She's treading a path which is still trying to, uh, you know, sort of keep the commercial uh, box office happy. Right. I think that A she says, let's me make a film, and you know, that's what happened with Monsoon. There was no agenda. Mm-hmm. Mira made a film for once because it was straight from her heart. It was about her people, her stories, about you know something that she just wanted to make a film on. She never thought about the commercial angle, and it became right. one of the most successful films. I'm a right. great believer in that. That you know, it's like the Gita. You mm-hmm. have to have purity of intent in everything you do. That's where excellence may follow. If you don't have that, if you're already muddied in your intent that oh, right. I want to make money, I want to do this, I'm going to do this for this, I will do charity for that reason, I will do this for that, then somehow it, it may it may work. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying right. your excellence is possible only when you dissociate the commercials. from the the motivation i am great right. than that so i think today zoya decides to do a film where she says with a heck of a lot of it is commercially viable or not she right. will write something really really exciting and very interesting dance like a man the journey so far has been has been exhilarating inspiring and uh, very reassuring so that i could carry on on this path of doing in your work superb and finally thinking aloud to you is is clarifying a lot of thoughts that float around in my head which sometimes are scary to address but you sit down and you just like, face yourself in the mirror and address them thank you so much for giving me this oh, i'm looking event. forward to seeing you uh, at the show and after yes uh, and even if you have very different thoughts on the play i would still like to hear them very much <laughs> of course thank you so much